Hello friends, what's up? I'm sure you all fondly remember the hero of Eternia with his blonde hair and magical sword, the one and only Prince Adams, or as we famously call him, He-Man. Ever wondered how his endless fights against the evil forces in Eternia begin? Well, how about we take the much-awaited trip back in time and find out how it all started? Excited, right? Let's not wait any longer and explore the comic world of Masters of the Universe Revolution No. 1 to unravel the origins of He-Man's universe. Produced by Dark Horse Comics, Masters of the Universe Revolution No. 1 is a prequel to the Netflix show by the same name. The adventure began on May 15, 2024, when the comic and series were both available for fans. This is a four-issue miniseries authored by Ted Biaselli, Rob David, and Tim Sheridan, and inked by Keith Champagne. This comic takes us back to the earliest days in the universe, which witnessed the most dangerous team-up in history, Skeletor and Hordak. The comic pages were turned into a superhero animation series by Kevin Smith in collaboration with Mattel Television Studio, which premiered on Netflix. Masters of the Universe Revolution is the second series and prequel following the overwhelming success of the Masters of the Universe Revelation released in 2021. Revelations served as a follow-up to the 1908's original cartoon He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, picking up on the loose ends from the 1985 finale. This newly made series focuses on the mythic battle between the legendary characters He-Man and the armies of Hordak and Skeletor. The story opens at a time when all magic was one, thriving in a universe even before space and time existed. However, soon, the two magical forces of Ka, the spirit of passion and carnality, and its brother Zoar, the force of protection and nurturing, waged a great war. The war was big enough to threaten the very fabric of reality, space, and time, and it seemingly had no victors. It wasn't until a third magical power, whom we learned to be Havoc, entered the scene that the battle came to an end. Havoc, with the spirit of mayhem and mutability challenged both Ka and Zoar and brought balance to the universe. However, only if things were as easy as they seemed in the beginning. Soon we see a group of Horde army fighting with what seems like advanced technological weapons. But that's not all. We can even catch a glimpse of these robotic warriors discussing about taking over Eternia. Things, however, aren't going smooth for them, which make them to call upon the man himself, Hordak, the leader of evil Horde Empire and He-Man's arch nemesis. Hordak can be identified by his hideous white or cream-colored look, pointy bat-like ears, and bright red eyes. His nose resembles a snout, and his fiery vampire teeth are sure to scare off anyone. He sports a black armor with an embroidered horde bat emblem and a collar made of bones. While in certain publications and media he looks more like a devil, his actual appearance is similar to that of a bat-like creature or vampire. In no time, we shift from a turbulent battlefield to a dark cave, the Fright Zone, where Hordak is seen meeting with the Fortune Sisters, the mystical trio, with aliases, the Guardians of Ares, Weavers of Shadow, and Keepers of Power Untold has the ability to look into one's destiny and predict the future. No brownie points for guessing why Hordak was there. Man was eager to know his fate. However, everything comes with a price, and as the Fortune Sisters warned, Hordak was to accept one of the numerous future paths that they set for him. Nevertheless, his unquenchable thirst for power and control shrouded his senses. The Fortune Sisters revealed to him the only possible way he can control fate and take over Eternia. But let's wait for that part of the story and take a peek at the battlefield once again. Engrossed in a fight, the Horde men realize that an overarching magical force on the island is participating in the invasion. It was yielded by Agar, a species of blue humanoids in Eternia. As we go into the magical origins of this Gar, we discover it's none other than Keldor, who was turned into Skeletor under Hordak's guidance, a key antagonist in the He-Man universe. However, Keldor is sometimes referred to as a half-Gar with his mother, Saren, belonging to the Gar lineage who was thrown out of the royal castle because of that. Keldor was thus outcasted from becoming the ruler of Eternia and grew up in Saren's homeland. In a past scene in Skeletor's childhood, he is seen with his mother urging him to hone his magical skills and fulfill his birthright. She advises Skeletor to go against the teachings of his teachers and practice magic that will protect him. Skeletor was the only one who could unify the magic, fragmented by the prism of Grayskull, which even his father failed to do. It seems Skeletor was prophesized by a mystical power to bring back magic in a place where it was banned and rule Grayskull, the fortress of power in Eternia. Keldor's only aim was to possess the secrets of Castle Grayskull and become the ruler of the universe. In a flashback sequence, Skeletor is seen harnessing his magical powers to become strong enough to take over the world and ask his mother who made the prophecy of his fate. However, this remains a mystery for both Skeletor and us. Skeletor is typically portrayed as a villainous sorcerer with a skull visage and blue skin. Now, let's go back and find out what the Fortune Sisters told Hordak about 
about his fate. The trio told him that there was only one way to conquer Eternia, by preventing the birth of Grayskull's heir with the help of the Staff of Havoc. The Staff of Havoc, in the hands of someone who is born from the fires of Havoc itself, is the greatest sorcery in the world, and the only way to alter reality and stop the destined birth of Grayskull's heir to overturn fate. Their heir is our talked about hero, Prince Adams, or He-Man. Any guesses who was born from the fires of Havoc? Tell us in the comments below. However, the sisters trio also tells Hordak that his destiny is intertwined with someone else, someone with whom he'll walk parallel paths, and this was none other than Skeletor. Yes guys, Hordak was destined to team up with Skeletor. As it finally turns out, Hordak meets a valiant Skeletor who has knocked down all the troops in the war by himself. Saving him from a horde, Grizzlor's gunpoint, Hordak lets him in on the grand scheme to rule over Eternia. He praises Skeletor as a great sorcerer, living in a realm of science, and calls him a prince without a throne, referring to his connection with King Randor. Yes, you heard that right. Skeletor was once the half-brother of He-Man's father, King Randor, which makes He-Man his nephew. He tells Skeletor that it was Destiny's call which brought them together to seize a power strong enough to control fate, and that the Horde has found one such power source. This encounter between the two provides a glimpse into Skeletor's past, where he was mentored by Hordak and shaped into the formidable villain that he is. We have reached the end of this issue, and the makers confirm that there will be many Easter eggs in the following story. A dive into the untapped Eternian in history coupled with action and magic makes this a worthwhile ride. This series is a true celebration 1980s He-Man comics and movies and an absolute treat for the Motu fans. Marvelous Verdict. In my opinion, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Revolution has the best of both worlds. It takes a sneak peek at the past while also offering an air of freshness. The creators made sure that it's a perfect reboot of the 80s classic by crafting an engaging narrative and brilliant animation. If you love a thrilling drama, this is a must-watch show. Its timeless themes of heroism, relationships, and the never-ending battle between the forces of good and evil will get you hooked. The childhood nostalgia is a cherry on top for longtime fans. I believe the plot twists will make the show a huge success and keep viewers excited for each new episode. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.